games of all different kinds have been throughout this entire genre, but one video game system, and their games, have changed my life since I've been little. The Xbox 360 genre, or as I like to call it, the Xbox 360 saga. I've played a lot of games throughout my entire life, but my Xbox 360 has been uh, something else. My PlayStation 4 has been broken, so this video will come out just a tad bit later. And I'm still trying to figure out the live streaming on my laptop because I am totally doing that. Shut up, camera me. But on top of that, there's always been something that I've loved to do, and that is play games. If anybody has watched my live streams, they know that I kind of enjoy it. And even if it's in VR, I still enjoy playing a game because that's the case scenario. But these Xbox 360 games have been something of a difference. I'm going to be talking about a lot of them, but I'm going to talk about my favorite ones and one game in particular that literally changed my life. Before I continue on this video, I don't really have any capture software for my Xbox 360. So it will be on my camera. And that's a big warning. Because, well, if you guys have seen my 10 hours in phone VR, or, yeah, I think that's the case, then you guys might know something that ended up happening. Um, the screen was very blocky and scrappy. Uh, sorry about that. But, unfortunately, because I don't have any capture software on my Xbox 360, and I've been trying to figure that out for a couple of days, it will be kind of blocky and scratchy. So, again, sorry in advance. Hopefully you guys don't have a problem with that. And I'll see sooner or later if I can have something for that. Um, that's really all I gotta state. But I will be talking about these games, and they're all kind of in basic genres. So, without further ado, enjoy. Minecraft. Let's start this off with such a great one in particular. I don't think I really need to explain it, but if you haven't played the Xbox 360 edition, this is before the Villager update that basically took Storm on Xbox One and, well, PlayStation 4 and PC. This one is so old, in fact, I don't know how to play it. This footage that you're about ready to see too, or is being shown, is one of those games that is definitely something of a treasure. And to be honest, before the bigger company, Microsoft, decided to take Minecraft over, I do believe that Minecraft was such a fabulous game. Even though there was a lot of bugs in the newer one, I still believe it's a fantastic game. But this game in particular has something that most other people don't have. No mods. I mean, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. But these editions don't have any mods. With Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, there is no more updates. So when you go to play this game, you don't get any mods. And to be honest, that is something of a king shit. The crafting in this game is, well, different. I'll put it like that. I'll, I'm just going to put it like that. And on top of that, everything else is also different, to include the villagers. So, instead of getting beds for the villagers to make babies, in that case scenario, please don't take this video down, YouTube. <clears throat> instead of having beds for babies, uh, instead you just make a home and they'll just make children on the spot. Making, actually, iron, gar iron golem farms a lot easier to deal with. And on top of that, there's a lot more stuff that you don't even need to deal with. For instance, the newer mobs, like the flying frickin' bats in the newer edition, you don't have to worry about. I don't think I have that, so I'll try finding a photo, because I forget the name. I literally hate them anyways. So, I've never had to deal with that. Pillagers are another thing that I don't really have to deal with on a villager. Which kinda sucks, because getting lower prices is always pretty, but this is also kind of an upside, because that means that you're not suffering as much when you go down, and unfortunately have to deal with any sort of thing. 
that does mean you lose some treasure, but a lot of the pillaging towers are really dumb, and they don't really have a lot of good loot to begin with that I found. The only goodest thing I've ever seen is a crossbow, carrots, potatoes, and golden apple. The bottles of XP are really pointless to me, so... But Minecraft for the Xbox 360 is one of my favorite of all games, and this didn't actually change my life. And this isn't one of those games that changed it for good or bad, but it did change it a little. But this wasn't the game that made me hooked onto gaming. We'll get to that one a little bit later. Let's move on. Let's talk about one of my other favorite games that I even own on my PC and on Xbox 360, but because I don't have an Xbox One, I don't have it. The Left 4 Dead games. That's right, I own both for Xbox 360. Fight me. The Left 4 Dead games, 1 and 2, are both amazing games. And to be honest, I would play these any sort of time with characters like Zoe, Francis, Bill, and Lewis, or other characters like Nick, Rochelle, Coach, and Ellis. And to be honest, my favorite characters from both these games, if you're curious, are Ellis from Left 4 Dead 2 and Lewis from Left 4 Dead. Because I don't like greasy bike-wearing vest man. Francis, and Bill's a veteran, so, yeah, that's basically like state, and usually a lot of people get hate for Rochelle, but to be honest, Rochelle kind of makes it to be that in-between guy of good and bad, why did I say guy, girl of good and bad, that's it, fight me over the comments if you want to, but you're not going to win, because you'll get banned, haha, -ha, funny joke. But Left 4 Dead games are totally one of my favorite ones, and to be honest, even though I'm looking back at these cases, these cases are kind of cool, and I think I'll showcase them uh, right now, but there is something that I have never realized until now. Both of my cases are really badly shaped, mainly my Left 4 Dead 2 case, then my Left 4 Dead 1, except for my Left 4 Dead 1 has this little lip on it. But these two cases are kind of cool, and I do like this entirely, because you have one that is Game of the Year, and the other one that's just the best seller. So, <laughs> let me showcase these games, and then I think I'll talk a little bit more about maybe weapons or the zombies. So let's talk about these two games a little bit more in depth. Let's talk about the first one, Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead has a total, I think, of four or five special infected. I'm going to play them more in depth a little bit later. But one of my least favorite infected from here is the gosh darn tanks. Okay, I'm going to be honest, tanks are fun to play as in Left 4 Dead 2 and 1, don't get me wrong. But the problem with 1 is if you're playing a co-op match, which is versus in this case scenario, you lose. You, you lose. I mean, there's no way. If it's 1v1, you lose. You cannot win. And playing as the infected is borderline impossible because you only get one infected, unlike in 2 where you have all four infected. So, yeah. Another thing, too, to state with this one is it does not actually have any melee weapons. And a lot of the games, like Left 4 Dead 2, that has Scar, it doesn't have the Scar. It has such guns like the M16, Mini Uzi, Pump Action Shotgun. Uh, you do have the 1911, as I like to call it, uh, that can be dual wielded, but there is no Deagle, and there's no melee weapons from my re recollection. Now, there might be, and I'll just add a little comment there if it is, but this game does have some of the wonderful gun games uh, with this one. Gun games, yes. Uh, these definitely have my favorite guns in particular, uh, mainly because the M16 is one of my favorite guns, my least favorite gun being the damn, damn pump action shotgun, because let's be honest, it's crap, it's better on Left 4 Dead 2. Now let's sit down and talk about Left 4 Dead 2's weapons, and then I'll talk about special infected on each side. Left 4 Dead 2 weapons are a lot more, includes the Desert Eagle and melee weapons, which, let's be honest, there is a vast majority, and I will be showing these on mainly on my PC, or my laptop as I like to, I like to call it PC. I'm going to be showing the game for my PC because I have all the DLC. Instead of ins inserting two discs, I'll make it where you guys' eyes aren't suffering. This is kind of my only game, like I stated, that I have on my PC. So, yeah. But Left 4 Dead 2 adds so much more, and to be honest, even the Special Infected, there is more. New implements like the Charger, Jockey, and Spitter definitely change the game from just having the Hunter, Boomer, Smoker, Tank, and Witch. So... Adding these three 
definitely add something. And with the new characters, you always get something else that is added in. And to be honest, each and every single match is different because the director of these two games is even better in Left 4 Dead 2, but makes it worse in Left 4 Dead if you are overran. And to be honest, even though all the ending runs that you get from each campaign is all the same, you survive until the main objective gets there, something about Left 4 Dead 2's main objective scares me more than Left 4 Dead's. So, yeah. Now let's talk about the biggest behemoth, and to mention, this game did change me, because this game actually made me want to play zombie games. So, there's that. But let's talk about one game in particular that scared me on zombies, but was my friend and family for beginning my entire life of gaming. Enjoy that, but I have to state, Left 4 Dead games are fun. That's really it. So let's talk about the series that has literally overruled my life. Call of Duty. Why am I holding Ghost? Because all of these games, which is also the rest of them behind me, and also on PlayStation 4, and as my dog starts barking at somebody or something, Let's talk about the campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and the spec offs, which I will get into a little bit later. Campaigns are usually one of my favorite things, and to be honest, Ghost's campaign, even though the disc is flopping around in here like a bunch of buffooniths, is alright. My favorite campaign out of all of these definitely has to be Black Ops and Black Ops 2, because, let's be honest, the story is absolutely amazing. Nobody can beat that, unless you're talking to Modern Warfare games then you then 100% you can't you can't beat any of those five but ghost campaign is something else of a different story now i'm going to be showing a bunch of these campaigns kind of intermiss and i might just show some of the missions in some of these but campaign out of all the call of duty games is one of my favorite i definitely have to state like i stated my favorite ones when i was a child is black ops and black ops 2 but nowadays i have to say all the modern warfare series not the newest one because that one can go suck a massive Roni Doni. Okay. The games are Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Those three campaigns are some of my favorites, and their multiplayer and their spec ops, or survival as I like to put them, is also some of my favorite. And most campaigns, like Ghosts, are kind of okay, but my favorites definitely have to be those. I'm not going to showcase them because i got to just showcase one game, and... That's because I have like seven Call of Duty games on Xbox. But these games are definitely fun. And Ghost is something of a difference though. Allowing you to be in a dog or something else. It definitely will make a difference to be honest. Someone was just at the door. Let's talk about a multiplayer game. Advanced Warfare to be exact. Uh, why did I choose this game? Because exosuits are fun. Fight me in the comments if you want, but I like both boots on the ground and in the air. But Infinite Warfare is a different genre of game in the Call of Duty series, and that's the game I won't touch. Fight me otherwise. But multiplayer games like Advanced Warfare are some of my favorite, and like I stated before, my favorite multiplayers are definitely Black Ops, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3, and Advanced Warfare. Because Ghost is alright, but I like their infection, and some of the newer ones are kind of... Shapoopy, let's put it like that. And to be honest, I've always liked those games, to be honest, but this one is particular because you've got exosuits and exo abilities. Unfortunately, this game is dead, just like 90% of these other games, but it is something to think about, and even though multiplayer is one of my favorite of all games, it definitely... It's definitely different. Each one has their own unique ups and downs, but my least favorite thing is, in the newer games, they add weapons from these games, which I'll talk about in a little bit later of uh, two games, and they mispronounce them. I'm looking at the newest Cold War. It's not called the Street Sweeper. So this part is a little bit late. Nice jacket, by the way, I'll explain later. I'm going to explain this, and sorry for the squeaking in the background. The reason why I hate the fact that uh, games, the newer games, Modern Warfare, the newest one, and Cold War are calling their guns a different name is because they have already technically said it in canon that, hey, the name of the weapon that you're using is called a striker. For instance, in Cold War, they have it named a street sweeper. I understand legal reasons, you know, you can't really do that. 
but you just named it a striker in Modern Warfare 3, so you gotta rename it the same gun name. For instance, the M9 Beretta, from what we know as today, the M9, got called Beretta in the newer Modern Warfare game, and basically was thrown aside, which kind of made me a little bit pissed off. For instance, the Scar was always been named Scar, P90 has always been named P90, and everything else in between. But what I hate is the fact that he's narrowed that they're naming these other guns that have already been put into their games beforehand or into their series of Call of Duty. For instance, the Striker, which is on Modern Warfare 3. Hopefully, I can get a picture of that, uh, like right there or something. I don't know. Has been changed to the Street Sweeper and Cold, Call of Duty Cold War, which kind of pisses me off because it's like you already named the gun. Why are you naming it something else? That's just a little bit of heads up. I'll let the past me talk a little bit more about. Um, I think it was Call of Duty Advanced Warfare or something. So enjoy. I digress. My favorite thing about multiplayer is always definitely the weapons. And when you get some cool weapon designs, like I did in Advanced Warfare, because this is literally the only one I played for. Uh, no, no crap hours on in it's fun that's all i gotta say moving on i, I, I literally that's all i gotta say so move, move, moving on there we're moving on. now let's talk about one game mode that did scare me as a child yet i somehow love it today zombies and yes i'm holding the original black ops fight me otherwise black ops zombies has always been something of a difference I know a lot of people might go, well, bugger, World at War Zombies is the best. You can't tell me otherwise. Or, bugger, Black Ops 2 Zombies is the best. The reason why I'm holding Black Ops is because I played all the DLC. All of it. But I don't own any of it. I'm hearing a bunch of you gasp. I should be scared. Um, how should I put this? I played Zombies, and I've actually played all the DLC for Black Ops, and I can agree with a lot of other people, screw Shangri-La, but the reason why I've actually loved Zombies, and especially this Zombies in particular, is because the starting chain of Dead Ops Arcade. Yep, you heard it here first, folks. Dead Ops Arcade is one of my favorites. It started in Black Ops, then it went over to Black Ops 3, and now it's in Cold War. And as my phone starts buzzing behind me, I'm going to let the footage take over some zombie gameplay, so uh, enjoy. Because um, i got to answer this. <clears throat> so anyways, like I was stating before I had a phone conversation, Zombies is definitely one of my favorite game modes. And to be honest, the actual game that scared me the most was Resident Evil 5. But this one scared me more than RE5, believe it or not. So in the end, I can definitely state that Call of Duty games are kind of fun, and all their modes are different and unique, and to be honest, BO4, if you know exactly, didn't have a campaign, so uh, that's a big nope Bruno, and I'm going to block this with the game because I can, but if you can believe it, the finger is my middle one. Moving on. Because I can. Now let's talk about something that I don't really get to see a lot in these nowadays games. And to be honest, the Modern Warfare game, the newest one, does not make it any bit better. Let's talk about one game in particular, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This game right here changed my entire, entire, I'm going to get closer, entire life. I don't know if I was in camera view. My entire life got changed by this one game. And that was because Survival Spec Ops. Insert music disc. Yeah. Spec Ops Survival for Modern Warfare 3 was my mode. If you believe I was good at it, I sucked. Nowadays, I've actually replayed this game and all of my waves have gone tripled or doubled from my last ones. Most of them were about 10, 15, 16, sometimes high, like an underground map, 30, which hasn't changed, or residential in the first one as 30, but I have changed them all to higher numbers than what I did originally. This game is played two players, and its campaign is just as amazing as the first Modern Warfare and the second Modern Warfare. And as I belch because I 
8 is Modern Warfare multiplayer is different than any other game in the Modern Warfare franchise and it's Spec Ops, which is, that's exactly what it's called, which is it's Survival, Chaos, and I don't like the other one to be honest, whatever that one, Mission Mode or something like that, mm, that's stupid. But the only reason why I would choose this game over any other game is because this game not only made me into a gamer, but changed my life indefinitely. When I get asked the question, what game changed your life to become a gamer? I always go to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I'll explain the story while I, I have Modern Warfare 3 footage going over, but let's talk about this. My brother, who I will just say un, undead doggo, cat dog, you know, I, it, he goes by Undead Monster 56, I'll say it like that, but I'll just call him Jason, just for sake of privacy and info. My brother Jason decided to purchase an Xbox 360 with a bundle of Modern Warfare 3, which is what this game is. He got back, and I had my account already on it, which actually made my name become not what it is now, but a name called Noob Man, as what a lot of people would call me. But for my Xbox 360, it was called Knob Man. So there's two O's and a B. So it's N O O B M A N five six five seven. Believe it or not, it slowly changed when I got into the PlayStation Three to be Nude Man and O O D M A N five six five seven. I don't know how you would pronounce that at all, but when we got it, I had made my very first Xbox 360 account because I never had anything. It was something different that changed me entirely because that was literally our first system to Xbox 360. We had PlayStation 2s, PlayStation 3s, but no game made a difference. I used to play Medal of Honor, Call of Duty games, literally Call of Duty 1, 2, 3, and up to the fourth one. I played a lot of different games from PlayStation, GameCube, and PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, GameCube, you know, all these different games. But the one that changed my life the most was the Xbox 360 because of Modern Warfare 3. And that was because I actually had my own account. I did on the PlayStation 3, but it was mainly shared beyond with my brothers as well because we would just play together and just say, screw it, whatever. And we only had one system. But the Xbox 360 changed my life forever, making me have my own set of achievements as well it wasn't combined it wasn't anything like that I can get my own achievements and feel something and the first game we actually owned was Modern Warfare 3 this game which still has a crack in the top of it I don't know if you all can see it this game has survived all of those years of us playing the game having it stored away and this is still the original copy and this is no joke this is the original copy to Modern Warfare 3 this is seriously my original copy that we owned for that Modern Warfare 3 now I hear what people are saying okay then how did this change your life entirely well, most games do change my life for either the good or bad, and teaches you something that a lot of people nowadays, or adults, couldn't understand back then. For instance, Modern Warfare taught me that teamwork is always best. It's Spec Ops definitely taught that. If you don't work as a team, and you go as a lone shark, you're gonna die. In multiplayer, it taught me to trust your team versus something else. And a lot of these other games have taught me the same exact thing. Minecraft taught me creativity, Left 4 Dead taught me that sometimes teamwork is always the best work, or going off on yourself isn't always as bad compared to sticking as a team. Call of Duty games taught me to always trust your friendlies and your family than some random person that you see, like a corporal, Corporal Shepard, you prick. But Modern Warfare 3 changed my life because of its spec ops. And this game right here made me so involved into gaming, that's how I have over...
So, the lighting, uh, it's been about an hour. My camera decided to cut out, and so I'm not really going to be able to explain this. But, uh, going back on to Spec Ops, though, this game, uh, mainly from Modern Warfare 3, and as I really like things on, but, um, it definitely is one of my favorable games, and to be honest, it's one of those games that is different beyond any other game, and the newer Modern Warfare game with survival doesn't really do a good job, because you can just sit in Juggernaut. With this one, you have to rely on teamwork more than going on your lonesome, and on top of that, you have more options like grenade turrets, sentry guns, delta squad, uh, spray shields people, different weapons, uh, upgrades. It's just like the newer survival, but it's a lot better because instead of worrying about just one menu, you have to worry about three different types. Your weapon, your grenade throwables, uh, turrets, and shielding, and then my favorite, the droppables, which can become perks or... Uh, useful stuff like Predator Missile, Air Strike, or other stuff. And to be honest, teamwork is better than nothing. So, yeah. But I think that kind of rounds it out. I'm so, uh, I want to talk about this a little bit more into depth. Uh, my previous explanation was terrible. So, a reason why I have not been on YouTube, if you guys did not see in the beginning of the video, I actually had my PlayStation 4 break. And by break, I mean it literally finally snapped and it broke. Um, an error code kept popping up and it's called an HDD has not been reachable. Please try again. Turn off your system. I don't remember the C, uh, the CE error code. I was on with multiple, uh, PlayStation network support technical crews. And I basically got told what I was told that it might be the HDD. And if you guys don't know what an HDD is, if you do, don't worry about it. If you don't, here it is. HDD means hard drive disc. So unfortunately... They think my hard drive disk was busted up in some way, but unfortunately we don't really know why or how. And to be honest, they just said your best bet's getting a new system. So soon I'll be getting a new one, but currently my system is broken and damaged. I did recheck it just be on the safe side if it's like, well, your system needed to cool down before you play it, you know, like all the older people state, but it wasn't. And unfortunately, that's the case. So... Without further ado, I'm going to do an Easter egg hunt because Easter was not too long ago, but I want to make it a little bit special. That will be in another section. Uh, I'm just going to use my phone because my camera is literally over here where this trash can is. It's right behind it. It's in a bunch of crap. I don't feel like taking it out. And that's that. So enjoy the Easter egg hunt. I'll explain more of the rules in just a couple minutes. Sorry. So I have to point myself like this so I can kind of grab the eggs. So there will be an egg in a egg like this inside of another egg i'll showcase real quick i'll put it in the one that it wasn't originally and one of these bigger eggs they're shiny and colorful if you if you guys would like to and this is only if you want to and you guys guess the colored egg it's in it's not going to be in this blue one now it's because well that would be stupid and this is an easter egg hunt so the eggs will be hidden around in this room where i am now and you guys will have to name the time and name the location in the room. It doesn't matter. You just have to get the time and the location. If you guys do that, guess what? I'll do a little surprise. But if you want to know, I'll give a little hint. If you do want to take part of this and you are the person that would like to, you will be a part of the next video. Who knows what will be done, but you will be. As my dog sits here for confirmation from her daddy, uh, that's kind of really it. I'm now going to get a little bit of footage of me going around. Uh, the egg will be in an egg like this. You guys just have to get the location of the egg, the time of the egg. And if you guys can get all of that and post it in the comment section below. And I find out you are the first person before anybody else, you win the competition. And for the other people who do guess the egg, but don't get the right egg, and you do still get it first for anybody else, guess what? There might be something in there for you all too. But that's only ahead of time. I'm going to jump the gun and let's hunt.
Howdy Bugger fans, I'm going to explain this right now. Currently in the works of the Xbox 360 video, I have been currently working on that for literally days now. But since I had my Cough 19 shot, which I could say it like that, I've actually been extremely tired, which has also set back these videos. And because it's been two weeks since my last one, I want to make something a little bit more special. If you guys have watched it all the way to the end, thank you guys so much. I know these video, this video is most likely going to be boring and obnoxious, so you guys are going to watch the gameplay footage, which I don't really blame you. Anyways... Remember guys, click the subscribe button, the notification bell, and the like button so you guys don't miss moments like these. And unfortunately, there isn't a lot of people subscribed. So because you guys aren't subscribed, look at that. Look at look at look at crappy that is. It it uh... It's been really crap. So if you guys do me a huge favor and just click the subscribe button and like these videos and click the notification bell so you guys don't miss the next live stream, which will be Tuesday, April 13th. Don't know what time because it's a surprise, but as soon as I do, I will post it up everywhere to include this channel. So check back as soon as possible. I literally mean that. I'll pull my glasses up. Check back as soon as possible so that you guys don't miss the moment when I go live. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this. My name is Bugger and I'll see you all in the next one. Toodaloos. Have a great day. Don't die of cough 19 now and I'll be seeing you Texans in the next one.